Hello, 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 and welcome back. Thank you all for taking out the time of your schedule to listen to me read God's word. And I do apologize. I've been MIA for a few days. However, we are back to read Matthew 20. We left off at Matthew 19. And now we're going to dive into Matthew 20. Before we do, however, we will pray. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening, God, that you have allowed us to come together, read your word. We are praying for your divine wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Also, help us to read with purpose and intention so we may hide the word in our heart and not sin against thee. And, Lord, help us to walk in your word daily so that we may please you, God. And I want to please you, but that we may grow in you. And I pray for every listener right now, under the sound of my voice, or the sound of this recording, that you will bless them. God, you and only you know the need. And so, God, we ask that you would supply it, whatever that may be. It may be a financial need. It may be a healing in the mind, mental healing. It may be a physical healing, God. I don't know, but you know. And so, Father, we ask that you may be a closer walk with you. Someone might be seeking truth. Be that truth as you are to them, Father. In Jesus' name, we bless you. Amen. All right, you guys. Oh, excuse me. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start reading Matthew, the 20th chapter. And I'm actually going to be referencing BibleRef.com tonight. And also, by, uh, Gateway, Bible Gateway, we'll be reading from there too. All right, so we are reading out of the New King James Version. Verse 1 says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers to his vineyard, for his vineyard. Now, when he had agreed with the laborers for a denarius, and a denarius is a full day's earnings, keep that in mind. He sent them into his vineyard. They agreed. Keep that in mind. Okay. That particular group agreed to be paid a day's labor. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, you also go into the vineyard and whatever is right, I will give you. Now, that was an agreement. That's what he told them he would do. He told him, go out and I will give you, okay? Rightly, what is yours, I guess we can say. Or he said, no, let me me, me back that up. You also go into the vineyard and whatever is right, I will give you. Okay, so that's, yeah. So they went. Again, he went out the sixth hour and the ninth hour and did likewise. Meaning he pretty much told them to go out and whatever is right, he said, I will give you. Okay. And about the 11th hour, he went out and found others standing idle and said to them, why have you been standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard and whatever is right, you will receive. Verse 8 says, so when evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, call the laborers and give them their wages, beginning with the last to the first. So the 11th hour one, the 11th hour group of people were paid last. Okay. Now, and when he, and when those came who were hired about the 11th hour, they each receive a denarius. He gave them a day, a day's wage. Okay, that's what a denarius, one day wage. But when the first came, they supposed they would receive more and they likewise received each a denarius. And when they had received it, they complained against the landowner saying, These last men have worked only one hour and you made them equal to us who have borne 
burden and the heat all day. But he answered one of them and said, friend, I am doing you wrong. Did you not agree with me, a denarius? Mm -hmm. Take what is yours and go your way. I will give to this last man the same as you. It is not lawful for me to do what I wish with. No, he said, is it? He asked the man, is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with my own things? Or is your eye evil because I am good? So the last will be first, verse um, 16, and the first will be last. For many are called, but few are chosen. All right. So I did some noting here. And if y'all hear my stomach growling, just overlook it, please. All right. So um, I took some notes and I definitely want to go over what we read. So basically what I gather through the Holy Spirit, and, and I've done some studies on this and I also heard different people, you know, teach on this. Some people have different as they teaching on it, they gather different things, but at the end of it all, it will all say the same thing, basically. But in my interpretation of this parable, it's about grace. It's about grace. And our attitude towards others who are being blessed of God. Okay. So God is a God of grace. He reigns on the just as well as the unjust. That's scripture. This is Bible. Um, this is what I'm going to say. That the kingdom of heaven is in like the way the world operates. Obviously, God does not operate the way this world operates. If I go to work and I work eight hours a day, 40 day, forty hours a week, I want my pay. I don't want a penny. When I tell y'all, I don't want a penny less than what I work for. I don't want a penny less than what I work for. I want what I work for or what I deserve, right? That's how the world operates. But God doesn't operate like that. Now, the vineyard owner told the, the gentleman or the, the, I guess, I don't know if it was a group of guys or whoever, um, that he will pay, he will pay them, the first group, a denario. And they agreed upon that. That was, that was their, in other words, that was a contract between the two. The second group was not a contract. The second group was, I will pay you what's right. Right. So in this instance, in instances or in this instance, there are two type of people, workers, if you will, Con a contracted worker and a non-contracted worker. So the obviously the contracted worker was working under a contract, an agreement, because when you go back to um, reverses this, we're going to go back to. Anyway, I don't even see it here, but it's here, obviously, because I read it earlier. When he went out and he got some of those guys and he told them um, that that they would that he would pay them a denario, and they agreed upon that, okay? And then those afterwards, he'll pay them what's right. So you have the non-contractors and you have the contract workers. Now... Let's 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 talk about the prodigal son. This is this is all going to tie together, y'all. I'm going by my notes, so we're going to talk about the prodigal son. Okay, so first of all, let's just say I'm going to define prodigal: one who spends or gives lavishly and foolishly. Okay, now if you're not familiar with the story of the prodigal son, um, it's a very interesting story, and it's a very it's a it's, first of all, it was a parable. Right. And we know God, Jesus spoke to crowds in parables, not the disciples, um, because the people would not understand it. If he spoke on a. I'm going to say spiritual level, they wouldn't get it. So he had to 
speaking parables to the people. And sometimes, honestly, the disciples didn't understand it when he was speaking parables, because I've read in, in certain um, uh, books here, and in fact, in Matthew, that they've actually, you know, after leaving a group, and D Jesus was teaching a group, after leaving that group, they would ask him, you know, what did that mean? So sometimes they didn't even know, but it, it was a parable and, and how it goes, it was a, a certain man. He had two sons. They had a younger son and an older son. The younger son wanted his inheritance early. Um, so, that, so the dad divided it. He divided it. According to scripture, he divided it. Well, the younger uh, son, he went off and left. He left home and he squandered his money on possessions. And some versions of the Bible said prostitutes. And I would imagine, you know, hey, this is a parable. So I guess we can we can add on to that. He probably, if he was dealing with prostitutes, he was probably drinking. He was probably smoking. I mean, who else? Who who I mean, who knows what else he was doing? Um, but he 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 pretty much just wanted all of his money. Okay. So he found himself during a time of famine in that in that area he found himself um obviously without money and he was in need he he, he began to be in want so the bible says that he went and joined himself to a a citizen of the of that country that he had you know i guess went to after he left his, his dad's house and he started working in the fields, feeding pigs, feeding hogs, feeding, feeding swines. And <laughs> now this is the scripture. It says he would, he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate and no one gave him anything. And no one gave him anything. So I guess he was that hungry a poor lack of money to even buy something to eat that he considered possibly now this is me saying consider because i don't know if he ate it or not but it said here that he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pot so no i don't think he did but he came to himself probably when he was about to go down there and eat with the pigs and stuff i don't know he came to himself and he said, how many of my father hired servants have bread enough to spare me? Not, you know, I'm going to go back to my dad and uh, surely my dad will feed me. He said, how many of my dad's servants? In other words, he came from a well-off family. And he was about to, he considered eating with the pigs. But he came to himself and said, wait a minute. You know, my dad have servants and the servants could perhaps even give me some bread. You know, the servants. And now he, they said he arose up and he went back home to his father. And he said to his dad, I have sinned against heaven and you. He said, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like a hired servant. That's what he said to his dad. Make me like a higher servant. Hmm. But the Bible tells us when he was still like a far way off, his father saw him and had compassion. Meaning when he was coming in, you know, they was wealthy. So that probably could see a far way before they actually get into the yard. Like, who was approaching his, you know, his, his, um, his home. And he noticed that it was the son and he had compassion. Now I can only imagine being a parent and your child has left home and you haven't heard from them and you're worried about them. You don't know whether they're eating, sleeping. You don't know what, what, you know, what life they're living, what needs they're in or what need they may have. And so you worry about your children. And then the moment you lay your eyes on your children, there's just like, oh, my gosh, like, you know. Yeah. So I, I, the Bible said the dad had compassion and he ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. 
Now, what the dad did was he threw a party to welcome his son home. He threw a party. I'm going to try to hurry up with this. And the problem here is not the party. The problem is the, the oldest son. The oldest son had a problem with that because he felt as if I have been here. All these years, the Bible says, and he said, I've been slaving for you. And I never disobeyed you. And I obeyed your orders. He said, <clears throat> he told you that he said, you have never even given me a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who squandered your property with, here says, prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fatted cow for him. He was jealous. Now let's go back to the contract workers and the non-contract workers, workers. So the contract workers, obviously, when they seen that the non-contract work, workers receive the same pay, a day, uh, uh, what is a, um, a daily pay, they was thinking that okay well wow if he's giving them a full day's pay then we must gonna get because we've been here all day we we're probably gonna get like you know who knows what they thought they was gonna get they thought they was gonna get more than a than a day's pay but when it was time for them to get paid and they got a day's pay they had a problem with that they had they had a problem with that and the owner said wait a minute now did i not pay you what we agreed upon i gave you exactly what we agreed upon So are you, is your eye evil? Are, are you, and, and I don't know how to interpret that. Are you, are you, are you envious that they made more than you? I mean, you know, but he was fair because, <clears throat> excuse me, he agreed upon a day's labor with the ones he agreed upon and the others, he said, I, I will give you a day's labor. So he didn't give them no more, no less, each one. But you had the ones who felt like they deserved more because of what they, what they did, what they were doing. They felt like they deserved more. Now, according to Timothy, uh, Titus 3 and 5, now I'm, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to, I'm going to hit some scriptures because Again, this parable is about grace, and that's God's grace towards us, right? That's his grace towards us. So it's not about works, or it's not about our righteousness, works of righteousness, which we have done, but it's according to his mercy. It's according to his mercy. He saved us by washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. I'm reading out of Titus 3, 5, and 7. It says, now, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, excuse me, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, which he shed on his abundantly through, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus our Savior. Verse 7 says, That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Now, the first will be last and the last will be first. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read what that may mean. The first the privileged, the prestigious, the selfish, okay? Um, those who prosper doing evil things, doing wicked things. That's the first. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the first. And the last, wait a minute, wait a minute. The first will be last and the last will be first. So again, the first is what I said are the privileged, the, 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 the prestigious one, the selfish, those who feel like they deserve, like I deserve, like those 
first ones that he gave the 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 ones that he you know hired first they felt that they deserved more because they had been there all day um and then and then the last so the last would be those who according to this parable the last would be those who who who's good they suffered for the sake of, of God, right? They was rejected by the world. They're the ones, the saved, the ones who have accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior, they're the ones that will receive a great reward. Because remember what I said, the way the world operates, God don't operate like that. Okay? And so... To sum it up, I wanted to read um, Psalms 103 and 10. And I'm, I mean, all of this is a summary, me expounding on this. But Psalms 103, 10 and 13 says, He does not treat us as our sins deserve, right? He or repay us according to our iniquity. So that that we feel like we deserve, we don't. We don't. I'm going to tell you why. I'll give you my interpretation of why. Okay. God repented he made man. He told Noah then to get your family and get two of every animal. Put them in the ark. Warn the people. Put them in the ark. People didn't believe it. People were doing they, whatever they was doing. Whatever people are doing nowadays. But God is going to come like a thief in the night according to the scripture. He's doing the same stuff we're doing now. Uh, probably a lot worse. Hate to say it. But when that time came and the and God sent that flood he clinked out all humanity according to scripture and now we're here I mean we it, just, it wasn't right after that then it's us that you know there's centuries 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 and generations 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 but we're here today and God loves us so much like we don't even deserve it. Honest to goodness, we don't deserve it. Think about it. Think about the way of this world, the way the world thinks, the way the world rejects God. But yet he is long-suffering. The Bible says he is long-suffering with us, meaning he He don't want us to perish. He want us to be saved. He want us to receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Do we deserve that? When we, when we say things against God, when we reject God, regardless of saying anything if you reject god that is just that's just the ultimate no no but you're the one the one who rejects god you're the one who he has long suffering for and he would have long suffering for those who have accepted him because sometimes us that have been saved sometimes we get away from him he never leaves us but we get away from him and he has long suffering us to get it back right or get back in, in line with serving him the way we're supposed to. Because we can't be right without him anyway. So he has long suffering. Do we deserve that? Do we deserve that? No, we don't. We do not. And so I'm going to just summarize, summarize it. I'm going to summarize it and just say that the kingdom of heaven is like the one in the story. The story shows, and I'm reading out an easy English Bible, the story shows that God is like that. He does not pay us for what we deserve. We deserve nothing from him. He does not give us what we consider to be fair. He does not reward us because of our rank or importance or whether we are first or last. All who belong to God 
are his people. And God is generous to all his people. Okay. Now this story shows that we can never deserve a place in God's kingdom. We can never. We receive it, however, because of God's love. There is a place in God's kingdom for all God's people. Not every person that is born is of God or, or, or God's people. This is what I'm saying. Okay, Even the least important has a place there. Some people serve God for their whole lives. Others, other people only begin to serve God a short time before their death. They all are God's servants, and they will receive their reward. Which that's what we're going to leave it at. Now, I'm sorry if I was all over the place, but um, I think this is a good parable to read. Um, it is chapter uh, Matthew 20, verse 1 through 16. I gather my notes and try to put everything together to make it make sense. Um, but just know that God is a just God. He loves us. And he may not give us what we, or, or, or in other words, I'm going to leave it at that. I already summarized it. I don't want to start fumbling with my words here, okay? I hope you got something out of this. Just thank God for his goodness and his mercy and his long suffering. And if you're not saved, receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. Romans 10 and 9, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Amen? And that's anybody. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, anybody, whosoever, believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. All right? God bless you all. I appreciate you all for listening. And um, may God's grace be with you. Always in Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. Bye bye for now.